not all rapes are committed by strangers. In fact, most rapes are committed by people you know and trust. I was 12 years old, young and naive. He was my cousin, about five years older than me. We were out camping with our entire family and he waited until the right moment to seclude me for special cousin bonding time. Afterwards, he asked me, how did it feel? I felt dirty and scared. This was the first offense. And then he came to live in the same house with us. kept happening, and I was too scared to reach out for help, because I felt it was already too late, that I should have reached out for help the first time around. It is never too late to ask for help. He was just a friend, an acquaintance, really. When he asked me to hang out Friday night, I was foolish to think that it was really going to be an innocent time. We ended up at his house and... As soon as the movie starts, I see him from the side of my eye, scooting closer to me. And next thing I know, his tongue's in my mouth. Isn't this going a little too fast? It's only kissing, he said. I didn't really want to, but I guess a little making out never hurt anyone. Truly a lot of this wretched memory is a blur, but I still remember snippets of what was said and what was done. I remember his hands on my hips, pulling me on top of his lap. And then making their way under my shirt and onto my breasts. Pull away and say again that everything's moving too fast. What do you mean? You were the one that got on top of me, he said. And despite his lie, I invalidated my feelings and eventually let it go. I remember his hands finding their way inside of my panties. I tried to take it out, but I couldn't. So I said, okay, I feel like you're gonna rape me now. And then he stopped, rape you? Whoa, 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 whoa. You think I'm gonna rape you? Why would I rape you? I didn't want to keep going and I would tell him, but every time, he acted like he respected my wishes, like he wasn't going to be the type of guy to pressure me, but without fail, he would fill me up five minutes later, but again, let him pressure me until I invalidated my feelings and eventually let it go. I remember that my panties were off. I didn't want to, but I figured that I'd try to have a good time anyways. And his phone began to ring, and I thought it'd be a quick phone call. In actuality, he was making plans 
to leave with his friends and honestly I was angry and embarrassed and I felt so dumb he acted like I didn't even exist the car ride home was very different than the car ride to his house I was just this random person he was obligated to take home I was just this body he tried to use and the moment I got out of his car and closed the door he sped off so fast as if he couldn't be happier to finally get rid of me I wondered if it was my fault it's so easy to blame myself but honestly there shouldn't even be a need to repeat myself no means no and that's it You okay? He asks. His hands are firm on my hips. I twist my mouth into a grimace. He's having trouble finishing, he tells me. He's almost done. One quick thrust. It hurts, I tell him. You want to stop? He says without pausing. There's a slight annoyance in his voice. I'm really close. I don't remember the feel of this boy's hands. I don't remember his caresses or kisses. I don't remember the words he said to me before we started having sex. I do remember his heaviness pressed against me, the way he pinned me down, his erratic and persistent movements, his loud pleasure, and my pain. I spoke quietly, kind of, but it's unclear. I will remind myself later, for days, for weeks, for years, what exactly I have said, kind of, too. Just let me finish, he says. I'm almost done. He hurries and then he comes. He's slumping on top of me, and though I'm not sure why, I am starting to cry. When he sees me, he's angry. Why didn't I tell him I was crying? Tell him that I wanted him to stop. He feels weird now. I've ruined this for him. I am always ruining things for him. I tried to tell you, I say. I thought I did, didn't I? He's pulling on his clothes and observing me with disgust. I'm naked and confused. Mascara streaked and ugly, alone on the bed. He tells me I don't get it. Get what? I pull the covers to my chin. He's already crossed the room. Get what? Recently, a friend and I were talking about our relationships, both past and present. The men who treated us well, and the ones who didn't. I think I've been raped at least twice by two men I was dating, she told me. Later, we admitted to each other that we'd never said those words aloud before. These men raped us, but even as we spoke our truths, we wanted to push them back in. Then we said it just one more time, just to be sure. He raped me. My rape is not rape to attorneys or lawyers or judges. If another woman has gone through something like this, it might not be her definition of rape either. Rape is gray and blurry and messy. In defining my experience as rape, I'm no longer to blame. This didn't change the fact that it happened. What has changed is my strength in these moments. I am no longer scared to speak up. I no longer believe that anybody has the right to make decisions about my body, for me, but me. 
regardless of the situation. Truly a lot of this French and I was too scared to reach out for help. Do you think I'm going to rape you? This was the first Why would I rape you? I didn't want to keep going. The way she made me down. I think you came to live in the same house while I was observing you with disgust. Not all rapes. Never in such a way. I wondered if it was my fault. Then raped us. I do remember his heaviness pressed against me. It so hurts. I tell him myself. Want to stop? He asks. Says without pausing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It is never too late to ask for help.